Welcome to St. Andrew United Church of Christ and to this weekday reflection. During the season of Lent, each week on the Wednesday or whenever you choose to listen to the weekday reflection, we are sharing with you something that comes out of the worship series that we are using for Lent that's entitled Again and Again, and it is put together by a sanctified art. It's a wonderful series of artwork and we are fortunate enough to have been given words from each of the artists telling about their thoughts when it came to the scripture and the piece of art that they created. And so today I would like to show you and tell you about a piece of art that's entitled, I Delight in You. And it was done by the Reverend Lysel Gwynne Garrity. Here's what she says. During Advent, we learn that the good news begins with John the Baptist shouting in the wilderness and everyone in Judea and all the people of Jerusalem following him out of the city to the Jordan River to be baptized, to repent, to change their hearts and consequently their lives. This is a moment of mainstream conversion, of widespread openness to truly hear the cries of one shouting out to leave what they had known behind to follow a new path. This, Mark tells us, is when Jesus' ministry begins, with a community earnest and eager for change. The Gospel of Mark tells us nothing about Jesus' life prior to this moment, omitting any details of his miraculous birth or the years of his youth. Instead, Mark notes that Jesus comes from Nazareth of Galilee over 100 kilometers north of Jerusalem. He comes to join John the Baptist's movement. We might expect the long-awaited Messiah to greet his new followers like the kings before him have, with a pompous coronation, with hunger to exert power and control over his populace. Instead, Jesus steps in line along the river's edge blending in with the crowds, joining in solidarity with those around him. Jesus doesn't demand any attention, but as soon as the water washes over him, creation is summoned to celebrate. And then she says these words, which I quoted in my sermon on Sunday. She says, I imagine him wading into the waters and leaning back to receive the blessing that falls upon him like rain. You are my beloved. I delight in you. In this moment, God in flesh joins alongside those he will heal, beckon, teach, challenge, and comfort. Simultaneously, God in spirit meets Christ at the water's edge, at the threshold of his ministry. Before Jesus faces the pain, betrayal, and challenges of what will come, before he does anything to prove himself, God grants him unconditional belovedness as his essence. From this, all his subsequent teachings and actions flow. 